Yes, everybody, welcome back to another episode of the United Twins with myself, CM, my twin bro, Cappy, on the other line. Today, we come to you as Carabao Cup champions. Ah, oh, yes. Blessings to everybody inside, including yourself, Cappy. My G. Manchester United 2, Newcastle 0. The six-year trophy drought is over, ladies and gentlemen. It ended on Sunday. And we're going to speak about how that came about in a few moments. But before we get into all of that, what are we going to do now? Let's have a little question of the day. Question of the day. That was me. Shut up. Welcome to the segment of the show where we give you the question by the end of the episode in the comment section below you import what you found to be the answer so here is today's question of the day so as you guys would know next fixture against west ham united in the fifth round of the fa cup but the question here is how many times have manchester united and west ham faced off in the fa cup so on the first half newcastle started the game quickly to my surprise, dominated possession while we kind of looked to work our way into the game. Maybe some of the effects of Thursday night football perhaps, but as it went on, there was an unfortunate theme for the Magpies. A failure to create enough clear-cut opportunities, especially with the position that they had. Don't get me wrong, they did carve out some chances like St. Maximin's wicked piece of skill hey. leading to a shot saved by David De Gea. But when Manchester United were clinical, Newcastle failed to do the same. We scored two goals in quick succession and that was probably a huge shock to the system of those Newcastle players. I mean, the first came from a delicious delivery from Luke Shaw on the left side of the pitch. Calls right onto the forehead of Casemiro who just guides the ball into the right corner of the net. Beautiful start. Uh, there just isn't enough we can say about the Brazilian. I mean, a natural born winner who has come to elevate and bring Manchester United back to the level we used to be. He goes after the ball like a plate of food and you can see the determination, leadership and mentality that not just him, but it's Sanjo Martinez, his longtime teammate Rafael Varane. All of these characteristics are rubbing off on the team and that will only lead us to bigger and better things down the line. Have to shout out Mr. Marcus Rashford for that second goal that was eventually rewarded to him after a while. Well, it was a while after the game, to be honest, because mm. I kind of got the announcement on Twitter. I'm sure it's official now, but all the better, because before it was originally given as a damn burn OG because it cannoned off the top of his boot. But I guess they changed their minds and well deserved. But I also wanted to give credit to Valt Vekos because he often comes under a lot of criticism so early into his Manchester United loan tenure. But when it works with what he can offer to us as a team, we are better with than without in some scenarios. His work rate, never say die attitude and the goals will come soon. But to have that kind of attitude just goes to show what kind of character he is. And I think that's another person to add to the list of cohesive individuals. You know what I loved about that second half CM? Come on, let us know. It was how Eric Ten Hag was able to change the game plan to potentially help us going forwards. The one thing that maybe didn't work out was the fact we didn't have a lot of attacking output and he made mm. the substitutions to try and sway a little more in our favor and we did get a little better in that area. But for the most part, what we did do was solidify the midfield, sorry, and defensive areas. Therefore having better control of the game and Newcastle found it a little tougher to create in wide areas. And their danger man, or one of their danger men from the first half, Alan said Maximum was silenced by the brilliant Alan Wambasaka when he came on. That's another guy we need to speak about. The improvement, the level ups, big ups to him. And there are many more names to say as well. But overall, the substitutions were made at the right time. The lads dug in, fought hard and brought home the trophy. One large ups to David De Gea, by the way, who's now standing alone. 181 all-time clean sheets for Manchester United. That's the most. He's a club legend for sure. 
and he deserves the recognition on flowers before it's too late. Blessings to everybody inside watching the United Twins. Here is a segment of CMZ United Report where I'll be speaking about some news stories from the last few days or today and seeing how you guys think about it. And the first news story moving away from the cup final is not so great and it has something to do with the owners. From Melissa Reddy of Sky Sports, Glazers split on sale with current bids not meeting 6 billion valuation. Sources that have worked with the owners indicate the executive co-chairman and his brother Joel are reluctant to see the United. In contrast to their siblings Kevin, Edward, Brian and Darcy, a position hardened by underwhelming indicative orders. <sighs> it's a sticky one isn't it when you hear something like that. Formal offers would need to be significantly increased to tempt the Glazers into an outright sale. And if you look back to November I believe when they released that statement, what did they say? They're going to explore strategic alternatives. You know what I mean? It wasn't like they're, they're outright saying this club is up for sale. They're looking for every little avenue, every little option to see if they can find an investor to pump money into the club perhaps or maybe somebody who can buy partial shares of the club but they still have majority ownership. All of these things that Manchester United fans have been fearing. Now going into the rest that I wanted to speak about. Their feeling is that United's stature pull around the globe, especially in emerging markets and potential for future growth revenue has been underestimated. This is even factoring in the club's net debt of £656 million. Transfer fees owed and the enormous cost of enhancing the infrastructure which is probably going to add a, a couple more billions onto that valuation. So what do you guys think about that ladies and gentlemen? Those are the two public offers. They really emphasize in that story the two public offers and maybe not anything behind the scenes. And even I saw something regarding the fact that they were maybe expecting more offers for their soft deadline. And then before, if you do remember, there was a story that came out saying that the Rain Group asked people, the likes of Sir Jim Radcliffe, to stay private and not really come out because it could be damaging to the Glazers' reputation. That's how we took it. So with all those things in mind, what do you think about this story in particular? Are you worried about the Glazers potentially putting a fast one and staying on after all, especially with this upward trajectory that we're on winning a trophy potentially getting back into the champions league come the end of the season are you worried let's see and, and the final one was just from eric ten Hag's press conference a feat of team news so anthony marshall is out for the west ham game confirmed and luke shaw and fred are questionable after playing some pivotal roles in that cup final we'll just have to see if they they are going to play or gonna have a role whether it's starting or off the bench we shall see and then he just spoke about moving on to the next challenge because obviously there's so much of the season to go on we can't just be happy and satisfied with this cup win in the Carabao Cup we have to continue we're still in the Europa League FA Cup of course and a Premier League position to establish so three competitions that we need to try our best to work as hard as possible to get the best possible result out of every single scenario. Ah, uh, you know what, CM? Yeah, yeah. I, I'm just saying now, that trophy parade is gonna be lit come end of the season, bro. It ain't just gonna be one. It ain't just gonna be two. It ain't just gonna be three, bro. That's all I'm saying. That. That's all I'm saying. Hey, what you're filming? Question of the day. That was me. Shut up. Roll the clip. How many times have Manchester United and West Ham faced off in the FA Cup? You talk here, like on a bit, subscribe to the channel, you respect the tweet now. Back to the video, answer the thing and hop in the chat. Don't question time. Question time. So, how did everybody fare in this episode's question of the day? Without a further ado, let's reveal the answer. One. Manchester United have faced off against West Ham on 13 occasions in the FA Cup, including replays. Our very first competitive meeting actually came in this competition in 1911, in fact. 
could we be lifting our 13th FA Cup this season? You know, right, 13 relax, occasions, 13, we're on 12 right now. Could it be number 30, Rudolph? But anyway, if you got the answer correct based off your memory, sap a one in the chat. If you use Google, slap a two in the chat. And don't be afraid to use Google. Because we use it too. But. And it, and it annoys me that I have to say this every week. Going into every episode, positive, hyped. We're just coming off a cup final win. And still, I have to address the elephant in the room. The people who are not answering these questions. You know, it takes about, I don't know. You, sometimes you can even guess. If you don't want to go on Google, you can just say, random number generator, activated. 12.5. Anyway, listen, thank you to everybody who reached the end of the episode. I hope everybody's doing well at the start of this week. Looking forward to the game. Let us know in the comment section below. Let's get some score predictions for the West Ham game in the cut. Let us know what you thought about CMZ United report, a little segment in the middle of the show. Mm -hmm. Ladies and gentlemen, be sure to hit a like on the video. Subscribe if you're new. Share to your friends and frenemies. And until the next time, we'll see you lots in the...